Hi, I'm glad you're able to join me on this discussion of structural icing, the icing that an aircraft encounters as it flies through clouds at temperatures colder than freezing. And we're working our way through the hazards right now. The next hazard that we'll talk about is the change in stall characteristics with icing. Other things they found, they found that um, the angle of attack will um, decrease, the critical angle of attack will decrease, meaning that the airfoil will stall at a lower angle of attack when it's carrying ice. And the reason for that is the disrupted flow of air over the wings as a result of the ice. This diagram shows that the critical angle of attack will decrease if the airfoil is carrying any ice. And also it shows the corresponding decrease in coefficient of lift. So what this is showing is a lower, the airplane will stall at a lower angle of attack if it is carrying ice. Since the airplane's wing stalls at a lower angle of attack, that means that that will occur at a higher airspeed. So in effect, the stall speed of the airplane increases if the airfoil is carrying ice. And typically that increase in airspeed can be 10 to 15 knots. The important thing to note is that there's really no stall warning. There's no horn or light or anything like that that tells you the airfoil will stall. And the reason for that is because your stall warning system is calibrated for a clean wing. When you're carrying ice, it will stall at a lower angle of attack. And the only warning that you'll get is when the wing will buffet. Also, the stall characteristics of the airplane are really unknown. Will it drop a wing or, or what? Uh, the only requirement and certification for icing is that the airplane hold in natural icing conditions for 45 minutes, and it needs to do that uh, many times with no adverse effects. You, they're not required for certification to stall the airplane in natural icing conditions, so there's really no idea of what the stall characteristics will be like unless they do wind tunnel tests on the wing with uh, ice forms on that airfoil. The next topic that we'll talk about is tailplane stall. When an aircraft is flying straight and level through the air, uh, lift is counteracted by weight and weight is found forward of the lift vector which produces a nose down tendency. So a, a, a counteracting force is required on the tail. In other words, uh, the tail has to produce um, a force that's downward and that's generated by the uh, horizontal stabilizer and elevator together. And it's done by operating the tail or the uh, horizontal stabili uh, stabilizer is producing um, a tail down force by a negative angle of attack. So there's a neg negative angle of attack that's generated by the uh, horizontal stabilizer. So when you're flying along um, in normal conditions, everything is happy. Uh, lift is counteracted by weight. Uh, the airplane wants to pitch down, so the tail down force keeps the nose up. As you collect ice, uh, things start to change. Now remember that the uh, smaller airfoils, like the horizontal stabilizer, tend to accumulate ice uh, sooner than the wing. Not only that, but also um, they are higher a collection, they have a higher collection efficiency, so they'll get uh, collect more ice, more ice on the tail than on the uh, leading edges of the wings. So as ice accumulates, uh, it starts to disrupt the airflow, and uh, because the um, the tail is operating a negative angle of attack, uh, when you lose that tail down force, when the uh, tail stalls, then you no longer have a tail down force and uh, lift and weight counteracting each other will result in a rapidly pitching down nose down moment and that can be pretty exciting when you're very close to the ground um, if you're at higher altitudes it's uh, easier to recover but when you're on final approach maybe about 200 300 feet above the ground it's pretty difficult to um, recover in a short period of time. So anything that requires additional tail down force uh, will decrease the uh, stall margin. In other words, um, 
your uh, tail is producing uh, a tail down force because it's operating at a high negative angle of attack. If you increase that negative angle of attack, something that requires more tail down force, requires a bigger angle of attack, will cause uh, you to stall. There are two things that can cause the tail to operate closer to its critical angle of attack at higher uh, negative angles of attack. And that's an increased airspeed of the aircraft and also flap deployment. With increased airspeed, the faster the airplane goes through the air, the more lift the wing will generate. If there's more lift, that will generate a torquing moment nose down around the center of gravity. To counteract that, the tail has to operate at a higher negative angle of attack to generate a greater tail down force. So that's one thing. The other thing is flap deployment. When the flaps are deployed, it increases the downwash on the tail, and as a result, the horizontal stabilizer and elevator will be operating at a greater negative angle of attack and closer to their stall angle of attack. The next hazard that we'll talk about is the problem that aircraft that are carrying ice have with their aileron or roll control. Aircraft are designed such that the airfoil or the wings are thicker near the root and then thinner out towards the wingtip. And this is uh, because of the structural design of airfoils. And remember also that ailerons are typically on the outboard portion of the wing. You may also recall someplace in your aviation training that airfoils are designed so that they will stall at the root first. And the reason for that is that the ailerons are on the outboard portion of the wing and if the wing stalls, you'll still have aileron control. You probably also recall that thinner airfoils tend to have higher collection efficiency and as a result ice up first or collect more ice. The outboard portion of the wing is a thinner airfoil and therefore it has a higher collection efficiency than the inboard portion of the wing and as a result it will accrete ice first. Remember that an airfoil carrying ice has a lower critical angle of attack, a lower stall angle, than one that's clean. So in this case, if the outboard portion of the wing is carrying ice, it'll stall first. And as a result, the stall will make your ailerons ineffective. In other words, there will be disturbed airflow in back of the stalled portion or over the stalled portion of the wing, the outboard portion of the wing, and there will be no uh, airflow or no dis undisturbed airflow over the ailerons. As a result, it may cause kind of a, a small low pressure area where the ailerons will rapidly move in one direction, which is called an aileron snatch. And this has happened in a couple of accidents in the past, icing accidents where the aircraft rolled inadvertently and the pilots had no idea what was going on. So this is a problem with icing if you have ice forming on wings at various locations on an airfoil you can't really control that. These are some of the problems that pilots experience when their aircraft encounters ice and the aircraft stalls or becomes uncontrollable uh, in other words, it's not stable. In future videos, we'll talk about how uh, visibility is reduced in icing conditions, as well as the effects of supercooled large drops.